Hello, good afternoon everybody. Um, as promised, video number two, dance tips, bit of banter. Um, after the first video I had lots of comments. Um, lots of people had different questions. Um, but most of all, most people ask for banter, which is uh, quite weird. Thought they might want tips, but now they like the banter, little stories that I picked up along the way. Uh, we're gonna do a few tips anyway. Um, I'm going to try and keep an eye out for people asking questions as we go. See Mr. Long's watching, Steve Long, Eggy watching, Mark Butcher again. More afternoon chaps. Um, after yesterday's antics, obviously it was my birthday. I was going to do one yesterday afternoon but I had too many beers. So uh, that didn't happen. Um, tips. Start off with tips. Let's not go back into yesterday's uh, videos. Um, right. One of the questions I got asked last week, I can't remember who it was now. Should have I think it was Dave from from our county. Dave Kernan, that was it. Asking about, he keeps throwing darts. He can't keep them in a straight line. He throws it either into the ones or the fives, things like that. There's lots of little different things people use. I used to use a bit of cardboard, put it on the board. But I don't, I don't have to do that practice anymore. I, I, I throw mine quite straight. So, uh, afternoon, Bill Bird, Mr. Long. Oh, Griffiths. Hello, boys. Um, yeah, so I throw mine pretty straight. So I don't do this practice anymore, but I used to. When I first started, it's um, one of those things you have to do when you're trying to improve something or change your throw slightly. Now, as before, I'm not a professional. I'm not a coach. This is just things that have worked for me. I've had a few people criticising me that I shouldn't be doing tips and coaching and things like that because I'm not qualified. Well, that's true, I'm not. I'm not doing it for that reason. I'm, I'm not doing it to make friends that way. I'm just doing it to uh, give a few people an insight into what I did. So it's purely what, what I did. You don't have to follow it. Um, it worked for me, you know, like I said, no dark, a non-dark player to being on TV in four years, just the, the way I did my things. Um, one of the things that worked back to straight line throwing, I'll just go and put something on the board so you can see what I'm doing. This is for Dave Kernan, Dave Kernan and that alone, but other people can do it. I'll take them out of the board, we don't need them. Well, basically, it's just a little tip to make you start throwing straight. Now, right, what I do, I put two bits of tape on the board, and obviously I've got the treble 20 in the middle of all that. And uh, I throw down the line of it basically. You can see I've seen you from there. So you concentrate on getting it in that board. You don't have to worry about numbers in this game. It's just all get about getting it in there. And you can see I've, I had three darts earlier on, I hit one in there. So you can see the hole. So as soon as it gets too battered, you try not to get holes in the tape. As soon as it gets too battered, give it a rest. Um, start something else. And if you really wanted to improve it a little bit more, you start doing things like that. And then a bit of tape below. We'll get this tape off there. So just basically, it's all about that focus we spoke about last week. If you're concentrating on the board hard enough, this tape's buggered. Come on. Yeah, if you're concentrating hard enough on the board and what you're aiming for, like I said last week about focusing, um, you know, the concentrated practice where you really, really concentrate, pretend you're playing somebody actually live. You know, pick an opponent, put it in your computer. So if you wanted to fine line your, your tuning a little bit, you could do things like that. And uh, basically I might have 30 throws of that. I'll just take that a bit closer so you can all see what I've done. Basically, that's the square I'm aiming for. It's quite a big target if you think about it. So I used to do things like this. I used to use a bit of cardboard. And then I try not to get as many holes as possible in the cardboard. So start off with just doing straight lines up and down. And then if you want to fine line it right left to right, then you do exactly what I've just done and put some pieces back to that. Look. Do some straight line throwing like that. Get it in that channel. Don't matter where it goes. Just keep it off that tape. And fine line it again. Like you say, go across the board. But I don't need that anymore. But that's with Dave Kern in that one. Because he's asking, because he keeps, what he does, he keeps throwing into the five first start. Or sometimes if he over adjusts, he's throwing into the ones. Now obviously, 
that affects your scoring massively. So what you're trying to do really is keep out of the ones and the fives. And um, even in Nathan Fleming, Chris Gallagher, local lad. Right, Chris? Yeah, try and keep out of those um, ones and fives. Straight lines, practice. If you want to fine line it, if, you're, if you throw over, um, then you might want to put the tape underneath. And if you are throw under, like a bit like Phil Taylor does, stack them underneath, put the, put the tape over the top. And it's a bit boring, but that's what keeps you in that little zone. And then you get used to quite a big target. And then obviously when you take all that off, you've only got that little target and it just zooms you in on that little area. So it's one of the things I do, or I used to do. Um, what else do we do? Right. When I get to a tournament, there's a lot of people I see, and um, you know, obviously I've told you last week, I look around the room, I pick my targets, I pick who I think I'm going to be playing, pick who's likely to be, um, you know, up there at the end, in the money stages. Andrew Lennon, even in Magic Mike, um, I am Mike, not Magic Mike, that's somebody else I think, that's probably a magician, Aidy Knight, footballer from old. All right, Aid? Um, yeah, so, you see these people, and they're all there practicing, and uh they're all getting ready for their games, and it doesn't matter what the draw is, blah, blah, blah. And you see them, you've got, they've got phones in their pocket, fags in their pocket, keys in their pocket, dark case stuck out their back ass. Get rid of all that, take a bag, I'll just take a bag or a coat, where you can put it all in your pocket so it's nice and safe, or get somebody to look after it while you're actually playing. You can't play darts with all this shit packed in your pockets. So think about that, that's quite important. And one of the other questions I got asked last week was how do you prepare for the venue because the boards are all different. It was a good point. So what I do, I mean obviously I have my throw at home first before I go anywhere. And I get my hours practicing before I go to any tournament. Smithy, evening Smithy. Um, Edgy from Spain, hello Martin. Now he's been a dorm in lockdown. Not good, I don't take it. You'll be coming back here for a bit of a rest soon. Um, so what I do, when I go to a venue, say we go to, let's just pick a random one, say we go to Canesham. Canesham's a real good comp, um, really well run, probably got four boards in the main room, maybe six. They've got, they use a couple of change rooms, cricket change rooms upstairs, they have a couple of boards in each of those, so you could be anywhere, they've got a little side room as well I think. So what I tend to do when I get there, I practice. I don't go for the, the emptiest board. I try and look for the darkest board, the one that's pretty grimy, it's in the corner. Lighting's not so great. They, they're not gonna use it for a fine or anything like that. It's just get rid of the first rounders. So what I tend to do, I practice on the worst board with the worst facilities, the worst lighting. There might be a wall down the side of you, left or right. Some people prefer, you know, either or. So I always try and pick the worst one. So when the draw does come out, if you're unfortunate enough to get drawn on that board, you're pretty much used to it. And if you get drawn on another board, then obviously everything's a lot better. The lighting's great, they've got more room. So if you practice on the worst board in the venue, it's, <laughs> if I tell this to everybody, they're all gonna be on the worst board, so that might leave some of the good boards ready for me. So yeah, so that's what I do with boards in venues. I try and pick the worst, get on that, have a little throw on that. Um, you know, if we can get 20 minutes on that, perfect. If not, then I have to go on another board, but that's what I tend to do. Um, there's a few little early tips. We did a lot of tips last week, fast. We did it quite quick, although it was on for nearly an hour. The games I was trying to talk to you about, the concentrated practice throws. Bob's 27, I've just done that. Um, Bob sent a text to all his Super League team last week. And he's asked us all to play three games of Bob's 27s. And post him our score so nobody knows what score is. He's going to do a little leaderboard. He's going to probably pick a different game each week. So nobody's going to know the results of it. Now, obviously, it's down to trust if you put the right score in, if you tell Bob the right thing. But you can only cheat yourself. So I've just played three three games of Bob's 27s. Um, how it goes is you start off with 27 points. You go for double one first for all three darts. If you get a double one, great. It's two points. If you don't, it's two points off. So uh, that goes up to 29 or down to 25. If you get it twice, you get four points on, so it goes up to 31, and obviously you can only get two points off because that's the double. Then you get a double two, so it's four points on, or obviously if you hit it a couple more times, it's more, um, or it's four points off. So basically you end up with an end result. You can get knocked out of this game. The first game I just played a minute ago, 
Um, I need a double eight. I'm one of my favourite doubles, believe it or not. Uh, Catherine Hawkins. All right, Ken. Hi, Mike. Selling my darts days are over. Don't worry about that. People come on here to take the piss out of me, nothing else. Hello, Maxine. This is my wife downstairs. Jimmy Hunt. Um, yeah, so I've just played that game. I nearly got knocked out. I had 22 points. No, I, had, no, I didn't have 22 points. I had 15 points left, so I had to hit double eight. First dart was wide, second dart was wide, the last dart just got in. So they got me 16 points up. Basically, they gave me 31. But if I'd have lost that, if I didn't get over that dart, I'm out. So the, six, the 15 points wouldn't have been enough. So you play that right round to 20. Maxine, you know what I could have had a shave? You're right. I'm still hungover from yesterday, dear. You nearly killed me with two bottles of Pim and about 20 cans of Fosters. All right, Reese. Afternoon, son. Come and Pete. Doing sessions in person again. When is this all over, mate? Well, you're going to be doing sessions in person again when this is all over. I can do. Somebody, I've actually, I'm not taking a book in. It's, it's not something I charge. If somebody's local to me and they come round, I'll, actually, somebody's going to come round as soon as this virus is all done. Hello, sweet in. Dean Baker, Mr. Somerset. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to do some lessons for a certain player. I'm not going to name him. It's just a little few tips. Now, I cannot change every throw. That's one thing you can't do. Every throw is slightly different, and you can do slight adjustments. Tony Snut, Mr. Kingsham. That's the I've been talking about. Mr. Browner, only professional in Bristol at the moment. Well done, sir. You're doing fantastic. Just a bit of a shame about this virus. You want you to get back into action. I'm sure you're making good use of the little rest. Getting loads of practice in with your boy. Hopefully you are, anyway. Not like me, I haven't thrown a dart until today for the whole six weeks I've been off. Shocking. But then, you know, I'm not the greatest practicer. Anyway, um, where, were, where were we at? We were talking about lessons, yeah. I, I can do lessons. When I say lessons, it's not a lesson. It's just a bit of advice from me. Now, I can't change people's throw. I can't change their size. You know, I can, I can put them point, a few pointers, put them in the right direction. There's lots of warm-up games you can play yourselves. There's lots of this you can do at home yourselves. You don't need me to tell you. I keep referring back to Matt Edgar. He's got a page on Facebook. And he's also got a little TV channel called Edgar's TV. He's a qualified coach. He's also a professional dart player. There's lots and lots and lots. Hi, Holly, my daughter. Hello, Josh. Lots and lots you can learn off Matt Edgar's page. Um, he's not a massive, pro prolific professional. I think he's 56 in the world at the moment, which is very decent. Um, but he's been around a few years. He's very qualified in coaching. That's all he's ever done. Um, sports coaching, sports science, things like that. Graham Jenkins. Terry Jenkins is boy, that is. Graham Jenkins is a top lad. Plays in the wrong country, though. He plays over in Wales for some reason. But I'm pretty sure he lives in Worcestershire. Thought he did, anyway. Say hello to your dad for me, Graham. Lovely bloke, Terry. Met him a few times. Um, Dan Raby, Dan Batch. Hello, boys. Yeah, so lessons are, it's, it's not something I chart. I did do uh, a few lessons down in Torquay a couple of years ago when I, just after I played Barney, so I was half famous for five minutes. And uh, I think all the lads down there loved it. It all benefited from it. Um, we sort of did, I think we were groups of eight, I think we did it. And we did, I think we had a, a two days down there, I think, was it? Two, two, Nathan Fleming, I remember, tell me. It was either two days. Herefordshire. I suppose that is a bit of both, isn't it, Graham? Wales and England. Um, what's wrong with Wales? Nothing wrong with Wales, boys. I'm only taking a piss out of Graham. I think he should be playing for West of England, that's all. Because I like Graham. He did look happy in his team. I reckon he should come the worst. Come on, Graham. Don't do a bit of poaching. Um, so, yeah, lessons are lessons. I mean, I could point you in the right direction on a few things what people do wrong. It's easier when you're here, obviously. It's easier when I'm in the pub, stood next to you or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's all good fun. Look at Graham laughing. Come on, Gray, you don't make sense. Who's that? Kieran Pete, I just struggle with the mental side of the game, self belief, etc. If you're going to do it again, talk here, I'll come in. Yeah, that mental side is massive, absolutely massive. Nerves, uh, having the mental strength uh, at certain points in the game. Um, I was touched on it last week, I'm quite clinical between 100 and, and, and obviously checking out. That area is good for me. Um, so. You've got to have mental strength. I mean, I've talked about Barney because I'm blue in the face, but I was prepared for uh, Barney mentally. 
You know, I, I did all my prep a month before, well, or the month leading up to it. I practiced playing him against the computer. I, I concentrated, concentrated, concentrated. Can you tell me a good story about Darren Davis? Fuck me, Graham. I could go on forever for Darren Davis. It's not the Darren Davis show. Sorry, mate. Me and DD are good top, top mates, but uh, Darren. Where do I start with him? That could go on forever. Good old boy, Darren. He, he uh, It took him two years. I've been sort of, I started off a couple of years ago with Darren, actually. Uh, took him under my wing a little bit because he's a local player, best player around here, apart from me, obviously, but I wasn't playing around here. I say that sarcastically to the rest of Western. Apologise, lads. Uh, Darren was doing really well, but I could see he had a lot of faults in his game, and he came started. I said, you need to get out of Western. You need to play Super League on a Tuesday, which he wasn't doing at the time. I said, the best darts around this area is Kongsbury League at that time, and he came over to join our team at the Ruckers. He made a massive difference to our side there. I pushed him into county, pushed him into Q school, took him up there a few times with me as a bit of experience. And he's done Q school two years running now. He's on the challenge tour. So, but Darren, he's he's one of these. He's um, he's a good dart player, but he's not great at listening. I fucking drum it into him sometimes about practicing correctly. He goes back and he practices against his uncle, smashes him twenty nil. He said, "Yeah, yeah, I've been practicing. That ain't no good practice. Smashing somebody twenty nil. He knows that now. He's getting better." He realises where the practice is. He needs to get on that N01 game. He needs to be playing people. Listen, not everybody's available to meet up around somebody's house and go and have a good practice. Uh, the pros don't meet up very often unless they live very, very locally with each other. They don't, don't see them practicing very often together. Me and Darren, he came around my house for the best part of, I don't know, about a year, I think, when I lived in the other house. Come around, we used to have a, an hour on a Tuesday before Super League. That's that practice I was on about before a big game. Hi, John Palmer, Sharpie. Um, Ashley Young, hello, mate. Yeah, so, Darren, he, I tried to point him in the right direction, and it took me, best part of, Clarky, best part of um, six months to drum it into Darren to, to practice correctly, to start practicing on his doubles, his setups. I keep saying to him now, he, every single day I say to Darren, three parts of the game, scoring, set up, finish. Set up and finish. Darren's a very big scorer, so he needs to concentrate on those other two areas. And I've told him to, I'm blue in the face. He's finally getting it a little bit. Um, and he says to me, he's practicing on these at home. So his results, hopefully, um, will prove that when he gets back on the challenge tour, um, when that gets back up and running, hopefully. And he'll progress his career, hopefully. He's young, he's only 30, so well, he might be 31 now. I've known him too long. Um, I'm on the back end of my career, so I don't really bother. I don't bother about who I pass my little tips on to. I, I just want everybody to play better darts. It, it upsets me sometimes when I see good players not improving. Nasty crack on your ceiling, Mike. No, uh, that was here before. Where's this? That's not a crack, actually. That's a shadow of the the light. Is it? That's the lead. That's the lead running across the electric scene, Campbell. Taking the piss out of my ceiling. Yeah, that's the electric leader. I didn't plug it main from upstairs. I just plug it in from next to me here. So piss off. Hey, Mike. Good to see you. Still a great player. No, I don't know about that. I play all right. Somebody's missing my lovely mum. Sheila Bent. You look so like your lovely mum. I really miss her. Sheila, it's quite funny. I lost my mum, as everybody knows, a few months ago. Uh, I've never missed my mum so much as this time. You know, this is the time my mum will come into her own looking after her boys and that. And I, yeah, I do miss my mum. It's terrible. And uh, one of my close friends lost his father last week, and or a couple of weeks ago, and he's had to bury him with four people there. Terrible. And, um, unprecedented times, you know. But we, we all know we're going to lose our parents at some point. It's a horrible feeling, but I really miss my mum at the moment. And um, my dad's not in a great way either. He's in a nursing home, and I haven't seen him for six weeks because he's not laid in there because of lockdown. So, yeah, we're struggling on that front at the moment. But like everybody else, you've got to battle through it, you know. Anyway, back to the darts. Um, right, a lot of people have said to me, why did I look up at the heavens when I played Barney? I pointed to the ceiling and went like that. And, uh, the story behind that is a bit grim, but that month before I played Barney, I lost a real close friend, Martin, from down at the 49 Club. He was our chairman. He was the one that secretly had words in my ear. Um, he kept pushing me and pushing me to do well with the 49 Club and as a player. You know, behind the scenes, he's very influential to me, and I'm eternally grateful for him. So we lost him, unfortunately, suddenly. And um, one of my closest friends from school, I grew up with, Ross Morrissey. I mean, I went down there to beat Barney for them too, and I had it. 
Um, I sort of give it a little sign up to them. Sorry, lads, I couldn't quite do it, but I, I didn't let myself down, so it was for those two boys as well. I looked at the heavens. I mean, my own fault, if I had six darts, I should have beat him. Anyway, banter, mind games. Talk about mind games. Has anybody had anybody play them and they're, they're distracting you behind you? They're good old Ian Cope used to do it, rattle his coins in his pocket, shuffles his darts in his hand. Awful. I mean, I'm very good at blanking it all out, but as I'm going to tell you a few. All right, Adam McNally, he'll be reporting back to his boss about this, no doubt, later on, right? Um, yeah, I used, to have a, I used to have a few people try and rattle me, never really worked, but I've had a few pros do it to me, which is quite unusual. My first experience was with old um, Ted Anke. Managed to get into the British Open down at Breen one year. I just went on the off chance in the week to see if I could book in. It had already been closed, the booking is. Do you breathe, breathe before you throw that? Ah, hello, I had an old question that is. Gary Anderson did that, didn't he? That gets everybody's fucking head fucked. That as you start thinking about your breathing when you're throwing. Um, yeah, of course I breathe. Graham Jenkins, he's a lad, isn't he? Um, yeah, Ted Anke. I managed to get into Breen last minute, and uh, paid me entry. We get down there. There's a few of us. Terry A's being one of them. A few of the other locals from Western we went down there. I got three or three rounds. I think it was the last sixty-four or thirty-two or something like that. I got drawn against Ted Anke. Now, not being a BDO player, fancy another TikTok when you're done. No thanks. Andy Parsons, legend. Um, yeah, so I get down there, and, and it's very strict, the BDO. You have to go up to their little off, the little desk. You get a little slip of paper with your name on it, and you have to get there with the other player. So Ted Anke's supposed to be alongside me, and we both get a board, which is assigned to you. You have to go to the board, and you have to both register and both throw up at the same time, blah, 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 right palaver, which is why the BDA is in a bit of a mess. Not professional at all. I was a bit unused to it. And my good friend Kelvin Art, the year before, stormed out because he got timed off a board because he wasn't in the right place at the right time. He was actually in the building long before any of the other dart player. But they timed him out by not being there, which is... So I had this horror story behind me, in the back of my brain about Kelvin sort of storming out and getting chucked out of the BDO comp because he didn't register at the right place at the right time, allegedly. So, I get, I get Ted Anke, and I, I go up to the, the board, and it says, like, 12, 17, you've got to be there, and you've got to be on time. So I get there, 12, 17, dead on. Um, yeah, board number six, whatever, I've got to play Ted Anke. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the board's available, go over to the board. Hi, Mike, can you see that comp being on the brain? What do you think? Uh, very unlikely at the moment, but... If anybody's paid their, their deposits, they will get their deposits back, obviously, if it's cancelled. If it's not on those dates, we will put it back a bit if we can. It's all about the availability of Breen, but everybody's up in the arms at the moment about when it's going to stop this lockdown. So I'll tell you about the comp later on um, in another vid. If you're any news, obviously, I'll post it all over Facebook, and you'll all know anyway. Anyway, so Ted Anke's not there. And I stood there, and I said, where's Ted Anke then? Where's he supposed to be here? And they said... Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he, he came over early, and I thought, no, he hadn't, because I, obviously you look at these big players, and you think, you're looking at what they're doing, and things like that, and he's, he was at the bar, getting pissed, the next side, having a fag, and things like that. So, because I'm keeping half an eye out for him, because I know I have to be at the table with him, so I was trying to wait, make sure he we were going to get there at the same time. Anyway, he didn't turn up. So I sent over to his board, I get on this board, and the bloke said, he lost the rain before, so he's chalking. And he said, where's your opponent? I said, well, it's supposed to be Ted Anke, but he hadn't turned up. I said, and he said, he should have been timed out. You've had more than 10 minutes on this board. You're only supposed to have like six darts, and then you crack on. I said, well, I've been over there now, and they, they said he's about, and he's registered. So I, I walked back to the officials, walked back to the table, and I said, where's Ted Anke now? I've been over there throwing up for 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, your official time is not till 12.17, and it's only just 12.20 now, and you've still got five minutes. So... Stupidly, I, I sought Ted Anke out. I could see him where he was sat. I went over and I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, look, Ted, we're, we're supposed to be on the board. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm coming now. Anyway, he sorted over to, he sorted over to the table, the BDO table, and I had a chat with him, laughing and joking, because they all know him, obviously. He's a BDO player through and through. And anyway, I thought, right, he'll be over now. So I go back to the board, start practicing again. And I look around, Ted Anke's gone. And I, so I went to the board. I said, well, where's Ted Anke now? I've been here like 20 minutes now waiting. The board's empty. People are playing other games, it's cracking on this comp. Oh, he's just gone to the toilet. So I'm thinking he's taking a piss. 
Now, I'm looking over towards the toilets and that, and that door swings open, and it's the door from outside where you go and have a cigarette. And Ted Hankey's sat out there smoking on a fag. Well, I smoke, and I wanted a fag, but I didn't have time to go out. I was worried about missing it. So, I thought, oh, well. Anyway, he come back in from smoking, and he walked to the toilet. <laughs> he was in the toilet 10 minutes. Well, bugger me, I've been on this board for, like, 40 minutes now. John Jones, yeah, we don't know enough about darts, John, so back to your hole. Anyway, basically, the moral story is he, he did rattle over at some point and started playing. I ended up losing 4-3, I think it was. Very close game. He got it on the decider, and uh, I think he got in my head because of the time he took, he knew exactly what he was doing. Um, he stalled, he deleted, he dallied, he dropped his darts a few times. He was just the slowest bloke ever. I know Tenaki's not like that normally. So I think there's a bit of gamemanship going on. So that made me think, I lost that anyway, I'm, it didn't really matter, you know, I wasn't expected to win. But I started thinking about game and ship after that. And um, quite, <laughs> quite ironically, last year, uh, no, not last year, the year before, I think I played down at Ladron Bay and I got drawn against um, Kevin Painter. And uh, everybody in the room, yeah, they draw, drawn out and they, they're looking for big names to play each other. You know, there's people like um, Ryan Searle down there, Justin Pipe, uh, Kevin Payton, I've never seen him there before, but he was there that week. That week. And um, he drew out my name. He, he, he drew out Kev Payton versus Mike Norton, board six or whatever it was. Oh shit, that's a tough game. Well, we had to wait quite a while for board six to become available because there's other people playing on it, blah, blah, blah. And Kevin Payton was sat at the next table to me and I could hear him talking. He didn't know who I was. Obviously, I knew who he was. He didn't have a clue who I was. And he, he could see him asking, who's this Mike Norton now? Why are you in an hour about Mike Norton? Because, and he said, oh, he got in a final last year. He got beat by Justin. He's a good player. He's, you're going to have a tough game. He went, fucking no. I ain't worried about him. He'd give it all the large one. And um, anyway, we went out to the hockey and um, he's staring me up and down like I've done something wrong to him. And I don't know who he, you know, I don't, I've never met him before. I've seen him at the Challenge Tour a few times because he lost his tour card a few years ago. And um. Yeah, I've got no beef with him, I've got no, I'm not a friend with him, I'm not an enemy of him, I don't really know him. But, um, you know, I treat everybody with the same respect. A few throw-ups, he won the ball, I think. And uh, we started to play, and he, this bloke who was sat with him at the table, I'm not sure if he was his manager or just a friend, or he was staying down that way. I know he travelled quite a long way to get to Ladron Bay. And uh, every time he threw a dart, he, like, he, he was playing really, really well. He was, like, scoring massively, outscoring me. Um... He hit a turn or a turn 40 and this bloke, just the one bloke was going, yeah, go on, Payne, go on, boy, you can do it. And I didn't say nothing. And I was, but anyway, I went 3-1 down, first of four. And um, I wasn't playing well. Kevin Payton was playing really well and I was lucky to get the one leg, to be fair. And this bloke was still piping on. And I thought, what a wanker. Like, you know, he's just making all this noise behind me every time. And he was obviously, he was with Kevin Painter or, or you know, but I got a mate called Steve Long, and he, Steve Long had clocked what was happening. So Steve Long started shouting cheering for me. He started saying, go on, Norts, you could do it. Every time I hit a big score, he was going to. Kev Painter's looking into the crowd, see who's shouting. And this bloke's looking around, see who's shouting. Long has got quite a droney voice. Sorry, Steve. Uh, uh, Robbie, sorry, Robbie. I said, um, so he's quite a distinctive voice. And every time I threw, after I threw the three darts, Robbie was shouting out, Great darts, whatever, blah, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's causing quite a stick. And this bloke was shouting for Kev Painter. So we had two little two little elements going on between each other. And yeah, I got a free all. I got back a free all. And it was still Painter's throw. And um, he was playing really well. I, he was on a double within 12 darts. And I think I was at least a throw behind. So I was like 190 odd or something like that. And he was leaving, he left himself tops or something. Yeah, that was his manager, mate. Someone gave me £5 and mark the game. Left out was a group of 30 or 40 around watching. Yeah, it's a big, yeah, it's a really big crowd watching our game. Yeah, who was that? that put, come out in that. Kieran Pete, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people watching that game. It was quite an interesting game, actually. And, uh, the game was, as it happens, I, I took out a 1 0, I think it was 112. Somebody will correct me. I'm sure Kieran might now, as he was marking, or was there. I think it was like the 20, trouble 20, double 16, or something like that. It might have been. 104, might be 20, trouble 20, double 12. But I had it on the last dart, which I'd done the, the previous couple of legs to keep in the game. And uh, Kev Payton slung his darts down, he stormed off, barged out of everybody's way, and he sat down his team, and he sat there with his hands on his, he was fuming, because his steam going out of his ears. 
And uh, it's a great sculpt for me, and I didn't even think too much of it. But it, this is what goes on at darts a lot. You get this little bit of background stuff going on. And, um, you know, some of it's good, some of it's bad. It's how you deal with it, and pressure, and your nerves. I'm very good at it, luckily. I, you know, I've had a few incidents in my life where it's much more important than darts. I take darts as a bit of fun, always have done. Uh, I'm very serious enough to try to win things and want to win. You know, I'm a winner, but I'm not stupid enough to think that winning is everything. And um, if you have to resort to game and shit, then there's something else. I'm not blaming Kev Painter. <laughs> I'm definitely blaming um, Ted Anke because he was at fault. He was he was there on on a mission that day. Um, Kev Painter, it was just, it was the mate who was with him. It was the trouble, and uh, obviously. Uh, yeah, Robbie Long backed me up a little bit, and I went up. It was funny. <laughs> it's more fun than bad, you know, than bad, bad uh, gamemanship. But that goes on. Mind games. It's all about mind games. So, hundred and four, mate. Kieran Pete, thank you. Did I go twenty? Trouble twenty? Double twelve? Last start hanging in there. I do believe. I think. Yeah, it probably was. So yeah, that goes on. Gamemanship. Um. So yeah, that's uh. That'll probably do me this week for this little chat. I've enjoyed chatting to you all. Uh, I'm still suffering and struggling from yesterday because my wife destroyed me on beer yesterday. <coughs> Thank you all for the birthday messages. And we'll pick up some more tips and a bit more banter and a few more stories. I've got loads of stories to tell. Um, you don't want to, when you're talking about darts and stories and professionals and things like that, I don't really want to drop professionals in it. And uh, they might not appreciate me speaking about them behind their back. I'm pretty sure I know Kev Painter well enough now not to take this seriously. It wasn't his fault. I made that quite clear. It wasn't my fault. It was just a few people behind us. Um, I don't really give a shit about Ted Anke. He's pretty done now. I, I didn't like him after that. And I, I've got no reason to speak to him. I don't dislike the bloke. I don't hate anybody. But yeah, I don't worry if he finds out about it. I'm not bothered. So I'm gonna... Yeah, right, mate. Right at the corner of the board before the stage. Yeah, that's it. You've got it. I remember the game now. But it was just... It was a mind game. I was talking about Kieran more than anything else. It was the... um. The pressure, all that. I think I went on to win the next round and then I lost the round after that. So it had no relevance. It could have been, you know, I didn't get much further. I know that. So, yeah. So I think that'll do this week. Um, rattled on for long enough. I've probably kept some of you probably falling asleep already now. Tony Lewis, keep it up, mate. Rolf Martin. Hello, Rolf. How are you getting on, boy? boy? Missing our Thursday nights. I'm going to have a little practice today, I think. I'm going to have a little a couple of hours on the board. I haven't practiced, like say, in the last six weeks, but the way people are practicing and what I've seen on Facebook, Chris Arden should have shut Ted's eyes out. <laughs> you were there, Chris, actually, I think. You're right. Um, yeah, I am. I, I think I'm six weeks behind everybody. The time we go back to Super League, everybody's going to be getting nine darters by the looks of what some of the results I've been seeing on Facebook and all these little comps that are going on. That don't interest me in the slightest. That. Show us a nine darter, Mike. Andy Lennon. Well, I don't get many. I've hit a few. Uh, most of them are in practice, obviously, when I'm playing against a computer. Um, I've hit a few against a few players. I think Chris Archery, I tell you what, won against him up, practicing up at the Challenge Tour. Um, I don't, did I hit one against Ricky Adams? Well, I can't remember if I hit one against Ricky Adams. I think, was it Ricky? I can't remember. Yeah, it's not something you could do, Andy, to be honest, just th throw nine darters. They don't happen very often. Um, I would like to say, I don't practice enough to do that kind of thing. Who, as a Martin, who's the best player I've ever played? Ah, uh, well, you could say Barney, Eddie Lewis, Justin Pipe. You could rattle off. I think I've played over 30 world champions or ex-world champions at some point. Chizzy, I love playing Chizzy. Took him off my garage and gave him a hammering once, but he soon took it back out on me on stage. So, yeah, I, uh, I, one of my favourite players, and always will be, is Eddie Lewis. And the highlight of my career, and that's not the biggest, most important game I've ever played, but... It is a highlight of mine, beating Eddie Lewis, you know, one of your heroes. You know, I was fortunate enough to play football um, at quite a good level. And, uh, you know, I played against a lot of the Bristol City players, Bristol Rovers players, local to me. And some of them were my heroes, and there's nothing better than playing against some of your heroes and actually beating them. Um, and Eddie, obviously, he's one of the best players ever, two-time world champion, back-to-back -back world champion, I think he is. And I just love his throw, I love his attitude, I think he could shave a bit more. But he's a lovely bloke off the hockey as well as on the hockey. And he got a lot of flack a few years ago for that little pushing incident. Good God. I think I see worse than that, you know, in the bloody canteen at work, you know, on site. The bloody shoving, pushing, it's nothing, is it? And for him to get fined as much as he did. And he got, uh, 
got a bit of bad press over that, but he's um he's the best Welsh player you've played against. I've played against Gezi, I've played against um a few what's his name? Double World Champion. Oh yeah, I've I've played loads of Welsh. Mm, I gotta say one of my favourite Welsh players, I'll tell you that. Uh and uh, he's an absolute diamond. Everybody knows him in the darting world. His name's Barry Bates. I love Barry. He's one of the first players I've ever played at, up at uh, Q School. And a little story about that. I ended up, I can't remember what the score was, but I managed to beat Barry. And uh, I had 121 left. And Barry was on a finish. He was on double 18, I think. And I went treble 20, 25, double 18. Uh, and I turned around and shook his hand. And he... He hobbled off because he's a bit of a, he's got a bit of a, you know, he's got a bit of a limp and he's got a bad arthritis and that. And I didn't have a clue who he was. And the bloke I went with she said to me, oh, do you know who that was? That's Barry Bates. You just beat that. I said, who the fuck Barry Bates? I think you got a clue about, about Barry Bates. And Barry, I tell you this, he backed me up on this because um, it played on his mind a lot that like I went that way on a 1-2-1. When you got 61 with two darts in your hand, the, the, I know now the normal route would be go 11 for the ball. Because I was only a pub player, I didn't really understand all about checkouts and things like that. I've always known that 61 in two darts is 25 double 18. Didn't think about the pressure. It was, it was probably like five all, first to six. And I just took it out last dart. I didn't think about going for the ball. I mean, that would have been the common sense way to go, 11 ball. Because you hit the big 11 or go for the treble 11 and it leaves you double 49. Um... I just didn't automatically pub player 25 double 18 and I hit it because that's what I was used to going for. So it's quite funny. But Barry Bates, it took him a couple of days. He came up to me and I didn't have a clue who the blue was. He came up to me a couple of days later because four day event Q school. He said, I've got to ask you. He said, son, he said, come here. Can I ask you a question? He was no bother talks. He said, what made you go 25 double 18? He said, it's been bothering me for two nights now. I said, what? He said, on that 121, you went trouble 20. He said, then you went 25, double 18. He said, why don't you go 11 ball like everybody else would go? I said, Barry, I've got no answer. I don't know. I said, so I'm a pub player. Well, he was pissed off with that. He didn't. He knew he'd just been beat by somebody who didn't really understand how to play darts properly at that level. He's been a pro. Been an, I, think was, I don't know if he's been in a world final, but he's been in the big later stages of big competitions. He's pro again now. Right, DD, been talking about you earlier. <coughs> You'll have to play this back some. Um, I love Barry Bates. I always make a point of going as beeline for Barry when I walk in there. I played him several times. He's I beat him in a few comps. He's beat me up at Challenge Tour and things. We're quite level, I think, on the old uh, scores. I can't remember, it's, but it might be three all, two all, something like that. But he's one of the nicest blokes you'd ever want to sit with in a dark room. If you're going to sit for 12 hours in a big venue like Wigan, around a table, you've got to have a Barry Bates at your table. He's non stop entertainment. He drinks like like it's water, he just drinks and drinks, and I don't know where he puts it, he's a little bloke. Um, Darren Davis, I hope it's a good thing. Nah, not all of it, mate. Matt Jackson, UK Open final. Ah, thank you, Matt. Yeah, there you go, Barry Bates got to the UK Open final, that's how good a player he is. And I, I've since become really good friends with Barry, and I always make a beeline for him to say hello. And pretty much he does the same to me, you know, I follow his career, I mean, he got a tour card, Last year, I think, by the skin of his teeth. It, it actually, Kevin Payton's at Spence, I think. It was somebody else's result, or Barry Bates' last result. Got him a tour card. Craig Thomas, tell him about the beach race. No, mate. That hurt. I've done several beach races. That's why I'm playing darts. That beach race hurts when they land on you. Mark Nash is my biggest follower now. He watches my cookery shows and everything. Good old Nash, yeah. Um, yeah, so Barry Bates is probably the best Welsh player I've ever played. Uh, he's not physically the best. You know, he hasn't won a world title or things like that, like some of them have. But he's the nicest Welsh player I've ever played, and I love. There's lots. Of, I've got lots of Welsh friends. Um, Robert Owen cost me a tour card, um, as he he got his tour card and he played me in the final. And whoever won got a tour card, so he beat me. I played him several times, and uh, I think he's two one up on me now. So, but I like Rob. He's a good lad. I don't dislike anybody to be honest, but I'm Ted Anke. Um Was that obvious? Kirk Shepherd beat KP, so Barry got a card. That's correct, Dave Durston. That's right, Kirk Shepherd. I played him a few times as well. Yeah, so Barry got a tour card that way. If it had gone the other way, KP would beat Kirk Shepherd. I think Kev Painter would have had. Uh, no, Kirk Shepherd beat Kev Painter. 
and that enabled him to get Barry to get a tour card. That's right. And if Peter had went, obviously he'd have got a tour card. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I think that's I've rattled on enough. Um, anybody want a private message me? A few more questions, I'll answer them. I might do one in a week. Might do one next weekend. But I'm going to definitely get some practicing this week because I think I I think I um. Craig Thomas, you're a legend. I'm off to wash my bike. Who's the nicest player you've played against? Oh, mate, they're all nice. Um, I love everybody, to be honest. Mark Dubridge is one of my favourites. Very serious dark player, but I just love... He's the nicest bloke off the board, um, if you get to know him. He keeps his circle very close. So what Steve Brown told me, he said in darts, keep your circle very close. Keep your tight circle. And I know what he means about that now. I didn't quite understand what he meant when he said it to me, but, yeah, um... Mark Dubridge just keeps his circle close, and I'm, luckily I'm in that circle, and I, we, I think he's one of the nicest blokes in darts. There's lots of them, mind. There is lots. Um, there's always assholes, everything, in every, any sport. You know, you're always going to not dislike certain people, but I get on with everybody, to be fair. I'm, I'm a gentleman to them, and, and I get treated the same back. So, yeah, I love Dudders. He's top bloke. Um, Justin Pipe. What a top gentleman he is. I mean, he beat me in a final down at Ladrum. No. Yeah, Ladrum. And the very first thing he did to me afterwards, um, he kind of put his arm around me. And he went and bought me a pint. And he said, hey, do you plan to come out for dinner? And I said, what? Sorry, he said, we're going to have something to eat. Yeah, I think he had his, not an entourage. He had his, his dad was alive then. His dad was there watching. Um, his driver was there. Um, I'm not sure who else there. was. There's a, there's a, half a dozen of us we all went off for something to eat and Justin picked up the tab and he said oh, Mike he said pleasure playing you and every time I see Justin now we've done an exhibition together down in Torquay and that night we all went out um, and uh, he paid for the food again he's a total gentleman I mean you know I like to pay my way but fair play Justin he, he picks up the tab but he has won the money he did get big more money than me for doing an exhibition I didn't get anything he got paid quite well so yeah pick up the tab just but he's a top lad I love Justin yeah so there's lots of them Chris Harden, yeah, he beat me twice at the 49 Club Open. Uh, who was that? Who are you talking about there, Chris? I, don't, uh, I missed him at. Oh, Mark Dubridge, I presume. Yeah, Mark, yeah Mark's been to the 49 Club many a time. Actually, I'll tell you who's been at the 49 Club Open. Gerwin Price. Um, just before he won his tour card. He's, uh, no, just after he won his tour card, I think. I think he won his tour card in January. Uh, we have our tournament at the 49 Club about June time, I think. And he turned up. I knew him because I'd, I'd seen him at the Challenge Tour and things like that. and uh, the, the Q School, sorry. So I knew Gezi and I went over and said hello to him. He sat downstairs with, with his missus and uh, they practised downstairs. And he actually got beat first round. Ricky Harden beat him. So he came all the way from Wales thinking he was going to pick up a nice easy four or five hundred quid. And um, he got sent back in by good old Ricky Harden, who's top player. Steve Real, that's last meet week. What do you think is going to happen with the BDO darts? Well, there was a statement from Barry Earn this week about the BDO darts. Um, he says they're not financially viable to do. Um, he runs the PDC as it's a company. Um, like you would run at any company, he runs at a profit. And that's why the prize money's gone up. He, he generates big income like that. And in the BDO, you need somebody who runs a company properly, a proper managing director of a big company who's experienced in running, you know, profitable business to run the BDO. I don't think a darts-related person is the right person. Barry Owen doesn't play darts. Um, he's fantastic at running the PDC. He's not only the front man, but he's a very astute businessman. And that's what you need at the BDO. And that's can become quite clear. He's quite clearly said that um, the BDO is nothing... You know, he's, he's in talks with them. He's in talks with them and somebody else, I think it's World Darts... WDF or World, World Darts Federation. It's talking to them and the BDO. But obviously the BDO are in big trouble. They're financially not very well, with what I've heard. I think they're half a million pound in debt. That's what I've heard. The counties and that are all gonna it's all up in arms what's happening next year. And I'm certainly not the man to what to, to know more than anybody else about that. It's only what I read on uh you know in the press, on the Facebook, on the news, things like that. But I know Barry Owen has spoken about the BDO this week and he thinks the businessman should be running it and I agree with him, I think. If you're going to have a successful company, you need a leader. You need somebody who's a... I mean, unfortunately, Chizzy's manager, Roger, he was up for the chairmanship of the BDO last year and he got it didn't win the, enough votes. Roger's a very astute businessman. He's, he runs a big construction company in London. 
you know, I don't know what their worths are, but Roger's the sort of businessman who does things properly. And at some point, you have to start with a BDO. Do, do you take their debts on? Can you wipe it? Can you start afresh and not call them the BDO? I mean, there's talk of it not being the World Championship for the BDO, which I agree with. I think the PDC is the World Championship. They, you should have that as the amateur World Championship, and that'd be fine because that's what it is, basically. During the war, Rodney, sorry, not, yeah, Simon Murdy, yeah, thank you, Simon. Um, yeah, so BDO is a massive, massive, it's a it's a hotbed of topics going this way, that way. I've seen all the different comments. Until somebody actually steps up to the plate and actually says what they owe and how they're going to get over it, whether the banks are right debts off and start afresh or they actually start a new company. I, can't, I mean, we've qualified for the Gold Cup as a team event this year. You know, I don't think there'll be a Gold Cup singles and pairs. We haven't run that yet. Um, the actual team event, I think our results, we are top of the league when it all stopped. So we would end up top. So we should be going to Rotherham playing the Gold Cup, champions and champions. I don't think that's going to happen because there's nobody there to support any financial money. There's no, you know, why would you travel to Rotherham and not pick up any money? I, the county aren't going to pay us. I don't think we, you know. So it's very hard with the BDR at the moment. Um... PDC is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and I think it's it's not it's not because of lack of try. And PDC have really tried to encourage the BDO to do certain things in certain ways, and they haven't. I mean, they don't sell themselves. Moving venue didn't turn out to be a good idea. The cost of the O2 must have been massive to cover the cost of that and and to stay to Wolf. I know they had to get out of Lakeside, but I just think it was too big a venue the O2 to just start to fill it. You know, trying to flog it. They were getting all the players to try and sell tickets. That's how desperate it became. And I think the BDO is finished, I personally. That's what I think. I don't think there'll be any BDO anymore. There'll be a sort of sprouting off, you know, WDF or whatever they're called. Um, and that's how it should be now. Start afresh. Just work this, Just draw a line under it. We want to do county darts. We want to do um, the, the structure of the BDO with the ladies and everything else. But I think it should be called amateurs. I don't think they should be professional in any of their titles because they're not professional. Um, they're not professional in the way they run the competitions and the way they, they, they act. I mean, the counties are more professional than the actual BDO, which is quite sad. You know, our counties run quite straight. I know Somerset, they're very, you know, they do everything by the book, the rules of the chairman, the secretary, everything's done, all the finances are done. You know, they don't run at a loss, they run at a profit, hopefully. You know, even if it's a £10 profit, it's profit. They run according to what funds they've got. They don't overspend. Everybody tries to get the cheapest hotels for their county, the, you know, the cheapest coach travel. That's how you run a business. You try and do the cheapest way possible. Um, professionals don't do that. A professional game is very, very lucrative to the top players now. Um, you could become 60th in the world and still pull in 60 to 80,000 pounds a year, which is it sounds a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, obviously. But you're taking the cost, taking account what they pay on hotels, the travel, and everything else. It's not much more than the average person earns a year in any job, you know, 20, 30, 40 grand. Um, so 60 grand sounds a lot, but it's not when you take out all the expenses and the traveling and the weekends away, every weekend, you know, Friday to Monday away from your family. It's a big commitment. So unless you're in the top 60 or more or better, it's not that lucrative. You know, they pick up money for exhibitions and the shirt sponsorships and dart sales and things like that, obviously, which aren't recorded on those figures. But yeah, you have to, um, it's not everybody's cup of tea being a pro dart player. I mean, everybody dreams about being a pro dart player, but uh, I did it for a little bit. For a, for a time, I wanted to be a pro. I've always wanted to try and get a tour card. But I don't know if I could be a pro full out, you know, flat out and packing everything else. It's a big, big commitment. And, you know, it's not for everybody. Um, I don't think it's going to be for me. Um, I mean, a young single man or, you know, who's got time in his hands to travel around the country or the world, yeah, absolutely, go for it. I mean, you know, you see all these young players like Nathan Aspinall. It's very documented about you know, having 30 quid in the bank when he won the UK Open. Changes. I grew up with Nathan in the sense that we played Challenge Tour and Q School for quite a few years together. And, you know, got to know a lot of good players. Uh, got to know him very, very well. Um, he got his tour card when I missed out on that one game against Rob Owen. Uh, we spoke after day two and he said, Are you, have you got your tour card now? And I said, no, I need one more point and I said what about you he said I think I've got it now I think I've got enough points in the first two days I'm chuffed with Nathan he's a terrific lad he's gone on to make a lot of money only half a million quid in his first year I think 
and, and good luck to the boy and uh, you know it's career ch life changing for him and I'm, i couldn't be more happier for somebody like that for me i i am quite a you know i, I do okay in my work so i'm not desperate for chasing you know a lot of players i know chase money they have to win to, to survive and uh, i don't think i ever want to be like that you know if it got to the stage where i couldn't afford to go to darts i wouldn't i wouldn't go simple as that what was the place that Raddy's rejects for me? I, do you know what, Chris? Chris Arden, Um I used to really, really enjoy playing darts in Western. And I backed Western darts as best I can. I, you know, publicly on telly, I've mentioned them. I've mentioned Western. I've, you know, tried to promote my own thing. I went from everybody patting me on the back, thinking I was great and all that. And then everybody starts patting you in the back with a knife in their hand. You know, they don't want you to be successful. They hate you winning all the time. And I, I stopped playing darts in Weston in my hometown because of that, well, three or four years ago now, I think. And I literally, the only local games I play is Tuesday night on the Super League, which is up at Clevedon out the way, where we all get on really well and nobody stabs you in the back and nobody's bothered about what I do up there. You know, forget about Weston. And there's some great, great people in Weston. There's some great pubs. You know, Raddies do a lot for darts. 49 Club do a lot for darts. A lot of all the local, you know, I'm a King's Ed player of anywhere. I've always played at the King's Ed. And I always will do, you know. Um, if I ever play darts in Western, it'd be for the King's Head, nobody else. Um, because they backed me at my lowest point, you know. They, Martin sponsored me, and they, they, it was always a team I've always played for. And I don't really jump from team to team. So I don't think I'll ever be playing darts in Western again, personally. You know, I turned up to the singles uh, last year, I think it was. Um, I'm literally playing for the King's Head because there's a load of young footballers playing. And I was trying to teach them a little bit, and Glenn, the landlord, asked me to give them a bit of coaching and see if we can get them a bit better and um we just you know I've, I've done that and hopefully some of the young kids have learned a few things and that's what I, that's what I came back to play for last year but I only played a few I couldn't play every week to play now and again and of course the singles came up and they said are you going to play and I said yeah go on in. I'm not doing anything on Wednesday I won my board down at the parish pump uh to get to the finals night um and it all kicked off again. Some some old boy had a right go at me. I shouldn't be playing. I'm too good to play in that. But why am I taking their spots at the at the uh, the singles competition? Why are you coming here? You know, you you basically killed our darts. We we can't play because you're better than us. Well, that's not my fault. I'm better than you, uh, mate. I'm sorry about that. I turned up for the young kids, and that's all I've ever done. You know, um, for you to say to me I shouldn't be playing in Western singles in my hometown. Um, I was disgusted at the time and I told you that as you I don't think he'd be watching this and make any fun. I think he's a fan of mine. Uh, as it happens, the week of the finals, my mum passed away that week. She passed away that night actually on the Wednesday. No, she passed away on the Friday. My mum got taken to the hospital seriously ill and obviously she passed away that week and I didn't turn up to the finals and even this, then that somebody said, Oh, you know, he just knocked a few people out in the first round to get to the finals night and then he ain't bothered turning up. Well, I had a pretty good reason not to turn up and it's not your I'm not here to make excuses for myself. If I ever do come back to Western to play darts, I wanna be purely for fun. I don't I don't give a shit about winning. Uh local darts. Um Dave Gripper, Lanham. Hello, Davey boy, my Irish friend, lovely bloke, him and his wife Lisa. Live in Wales now, Torquay. No Printer's Elbow pub, fantastic. You loved it down there. Missing that, Dave. Absolutely missing it. Uh, I had an invite from um, anybody down Torquay Way for a long time. Hint, hint. Um, right then, I'm off now. I've chatted enough. Uh, not much of it been about darts. It's more about me. My little experiences. So I hope you have fun. I don't mind um, You know what you think of this. One way or the other. Don't bother me. If you've got anything bad to say, say it on air. I don't care. Um, who's that? Skitsy. Fuck them, Mike, you're a star on that, not the top man keeper. Yeah, I do, that's what I do, mate. I don't give a shit, mate. I, I've got thick skin, you know, brick there. Don't bother me what people think. I just don't want to give them the, the, the satisfaction of um, of them upsetting me. I'm quite happy where I'm playing darts. I play out over at Salt House at Clevedon. I play on a Thursday night at Clevedon for the Ruckers. Love it. Best bunch of lads ever. Come on, the Ruckers. Won the league again this year. Tiny ain't happy, but hey, yo. Um, yeah, so I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to have my tea. Uh, see you all next week. Hope all is well with you, Mike. Yes, Dave, everything's fine with me, mate. Apart from my hangover, of course. Skitsy, I'll still be you. Of course you will, Skitsy. I can't wait. I've got to play you sober one day. Skitsy, top lad. Right, I'm going to go and have a shave. That's right. Right, see you all later. Thank you very much. Take care.